Ya Rasul-i Kareem, Ya Habib al-Azim, Fati Allah, Ya Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum and a reminder always to myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskeenu, zalim, jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. InshaAllah Hajjul Shahir will recite the holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah and we'll start with that. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حياتي خير لكم تحدثون ويحدث لكم فإذا أنا مت كانت وفاتي خيرا لكم تعرضوا علي أعمالكم فإن رأيت خيرا حمدت الله وإن رأيت غير ذلك استغفرت ذلك استغفرت الله لكم صدق الله العظيم صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا الحمد لله ذر الله عز وجل بلاب دي مسنجر سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم so that my life is is good for you and was related and you will be relate with me, you'll be related with me and it will be related to you. But when I pass from this world it will be better for you. I observe the deeds of my nation and my ummah. If I find it to have any good I thank Allah and praise Allah and I find anything bad I ask for forgiveness from Allah on your behalf. This is a, from Allah giving shahidun that Prophet is shahidun, mubashirun wa nadirun and that when Prophet veiled his physicality the ruhaniyat of and the reality of the light of Prophet is very much alive and very much present. And the grand intercessor, the one whom has the machine language with Allah that nothing comes between Ahad and Ahmad and there is no angel, there is no prophet, there is no one who can take that dialogue and that communication. And I have one nation that is one face always facing creation means taking all their information, all their amal, I'm under their nazar is coming, my nazar is coming and observing what is good and what is bad, what is good alhamdulillah, what is bad to correct it and ask Allah's istighfar. And I have one reality always in the Divinely Presence, means the, the power that is never off, it's beyond understanding of binary on and off. It's a power that is in a continuous phase of on, it's continuously on. Neither sleep nor slumber takes that power away, that it's Hayyu al-Qayyum, that something that insan from physical world doesn't understand the spiritual world. Now the reason for this hadith lays the foundation of what we wanted to talk about as a reminder always for myself that all the emails coming in is asking for nazar. That Shaykh keep us under your nazar, Shaykh keep us under your nazar, keep us under your nazar. And what do we have as a reminder in our life, what we said the key word was? Huh? Demographics. Demographics. That you don't… it gives a sign, technologies give us a sign of Allah's Divinely Kingdom multiplied by a billion. That for a shaykh he doesn't have to use spiritual power to see what people are doing. Right now everything Allah is giving him demographics and all sorts of reports. They merely go on to their computer reports, they know who clicked on YouTube, means they know who's watching the videos, they know who clicked on the shop, what they're getting. You know who clicked on, on all the different mediums, today we were clicking on SoundCloud and we saw Ali's name. We clicked on the shop, we saw Ali Aftab's name, then we clicked another place, we saw Ali's name. Well, we kept seeing Ali's name everywhere and then we started to talk to him. 
and said, this is what's important. Not that you keep asking, you know, make your nazar upon me, make your nazar upon me, but you're not showing up in anyone's demographics. That's the dunya of it, imagine how the akhir of it. That they're teaching that you want their nazar, they have to read these demographics. They're aware of everything that they have as a, as a mission from Sayyidina Muhammad Every donation comes in, every video that goes out, every comment that coming, every email that coming. In our whole lives everything we do it's being reported. So before mukhabarat and spies they had to do a lot of work to find something out about you. Imagine then the spies of the heart. And then they came and said, well now we don't have to really do anything because whatever you click on, on Facebook and social media, we're observing you. But that for the believers should be an understanding that, of course Allah is aware of everything. Of whatever I click on, whatever I'm doing, whatever well, I, I'm commenting on, where, wherever I'm not commenting on, whatever I'm doing there's a, demo, a demographic file being built on me. His was shaitan, they'll use that information to figure out who you are, what you like, what kind of food you like, what, what entertainment you like, what videos you like to stream, what you like to click on. Your whole psychological profile is being developed by their softwares and algorithms. They know at certain time you log on to this, a certain time you're eating this, a certain time now you're ordering these foods and these drinks. And all of these technologies Allah is giving to us to understand. Do you see how they look at those demographic files and they build an understanding for you? So when we are asking for the nazar, Prophet is teaching that I told my companions in this holy hadith that the amal is being witnessed, I'm witnessing your amal means my nazar is on Allah's demographics. Everything that insan is doing it's either going towards good or to bad. If their files, their clicking, their ibadah, their worshipness, their giving, their charity, their, their everything we do is building a demographic profile for Allah When amas are good and they're strong then they're building the nazar of Prophet to praise Allah And all of us are in search of that. So then the gift to us that is very simple, if we want the nazar of people in life then participate. Every comment that you make, everything that you click, everything that you do, everywhere on these platforms that you're active and involved, you're building a demographic for that shaykh and that's why that reality of the hadiths that are become the ears in which you hear and the eyes in which you see. So who's, who's seeing these demographics? So when people are making du'a they're asking, okay just make, make nazar upon me and then in their lives they're making du'as. Their du'a and their demographics are not matching and Allah is not answer. Very simple understanding. They're making du'as, I want this, I want this, I want this opening, I want these things. The demographic profile doesn't match for Allah how they're asking for it, the file gets looked away. No. But the one whom their file is filled with all these demographics, they're clicking, they're doing, they're contributing, they're active in all of these things, that demographic profile now is being raised and then it validates what they're asking. That no doubt Allah said what they're asking, then alhamdulillah grant to them. Because everything comes from Allah, it's not coming from any shaykh. Everything is coming from Allah The reality of the shaykh was to build your demographic and social profile. He comes into your life to teach you, to get you to be active before all of these technologies. You are doing a khidmat and having to live near the shaykh. Now the shaykh is virtual, it doesn't need it. Because all that's necessary is he builds a social and demographic profile on you, gets you to be interactive, he doesn't need you to come and pick his oranges. When they didn't have the technology, you had to come there and pick oranges and, and, and go out and play with the sheep and you lived a life of service. <laughs> 
Now it's, it's much more virtual. Yeah. You know, dealing with sheep is not easy. So <laughs> you guys, you, you never lived on a farm, so I don't know what you're thinking. But to clean that guy and to feed him and to go through all his waste with a shovel is a lot of work, not easy work, not, not a fragrant work. So, you, <laughs> you know, and that was always the case. People come and say, Well, I have to do these things. I came to get knowledges. And it didn't work that way, Allah was, you know, before we grant what we want to grant, where's the file, where's the demographics? So old time demographics was much harder to build and you had to physically be in a proximity. Now SubhanAllah with this technology, the shaykh can reach you from any part of this earth. You know, we know because we know who's logging on, every night we're asking in and they're coming from all over the world. Their demographic profile is, is looking in and even after if we didn't catch them in the live broadcast they're coming in when they wake up and they're logging in, they're making a comment, oh I watched the zikr, mashaAllah zikr was powerful, I did like this. They're building a profile, they're clicking and that's why the shaykh is encouraging, that's the only role of the shaykh is to create these mediums in which you should build your profile. You should be clicking, you should be contributing, you should be supporting, you should be writing a comment. If it's Prophet that you love, why are you staying silent? You, you think your love is just between you and Allah knows it? But you're not a person that makes your love to be active, to be, to be visualized, you have no prof no profile is going up. So when you're active involved in all of this muhabbat and all of this love and all of these activities. Then when the shaykh is looking at it, it doesn't need rocket science. They can see the names throughout everything, the same name. And that's why you don't also make very bad names as your profile because some people have like horrible profile names and then they're clicking and saying all these nice things but the profile is sort of kind of like a bizarre name. Keep it to be nice, Prophet is watching. We are people who who do everything in a beatific way, we don't write bad things, we don't you know, create bad names. Whatever you create a bad, you create a bad tajalli on yourself. When you, when you put out something bad, it, it's a name that associates that bad energy upon yourself. So think of beatific things and, and clean and proper ways. And then once we're doing all these activities, it's building a profile for us. And when the shaykh's nazar is not necessary for you to say, shaykh make your nazar um, upon me. Because that's like a, as a hollow request, why? Why the shaykh's nazar upon you, how? You haven't done anything, you're not active in anything, in any platform and anywhere that the shaykh has on a virtual world, not a YouTube that you click on. As we said before, 4,000 views and, and, and 300 or 200 or 100 comments, that's it. What happened to the 3,900 other people? They don't want the nazar of Prophet they don't want the nazar of Allah they don't want to contribute and the name come through, they don't want to watch a video and put a comment, they don't want to, to participate, they want to think that they're hidden and, and, and their hidden reality is of a special nature. Why are you hidden? We said before, why Allah the first step in Islam was to make your shahada, why? Allah doesn't know the faith He gave to you. Well who is your shahada for? Is for Allah He knows He gave you iman or no iman but He wants you to know it. He wants you to actively all day long you're calling the azan, you're giving your shahada, you're giving your salah shahadah. All day long you're reminding yourself for your social profile for Allah that I'm actively saying it, I'm reminding myself, I'm reminding myself, I'm reminding myself so that that file when it's going up it's, it's getting the nazar, it's not needed that you keep saying, make your nazar upon me because the real nazar is be active, be involved and participate. Your participation is your best proof. The rest you can say from your mouth all you want but if you're not participating, you're missing the, the immensity of the ocean of that reality. And in these days that nazar goes up to Prophet and that rahmah, that fires and that blessing begin to dress upon the nation, upon the family, upon everything that we do. The shaykhs they live by that reality. 
the shaykh doesn't, doesn't have to keep calling his shaykh, please you pray upon me, please you pray upon me. Because the shaykh was endowed with that reality that I don't need to pray upon you, if you're not doing anything all my prayers in the world not going to help you. But if you got something from us and you got something from Sayyidina Muhammad you better be active. And that's what your nazar is because every time you move, you talk, you, you propagate, you speak, you, you put out this, you put out that, the shaykh is looking at his file and all his shaykhs are looking at them and the whole chain of the shaykhs are looking. That's why I say, you don't have to like us but you better believe that we're on a mission. You don't have to like me and you can watch me privately and not tell anyone, we're like the person nobody wants to know that they're following. They follow the shaykh, they don't want to say it, maybe he's controversial, maybe he talks about things we don't understand. But one thing you definitely will know is that we're on a mission. We're putting out as much as we can, doing as much as we can with apps and books and videos and this is what's taught by us and this is what we teach the students who are following. They're all on a mission, they're putting out immense amounts of work. When they put out and do and, and serve and all the participation that they do, you don't think that's already going up to the shaykhs, all the shaykhs of the golden chain. That's why we're no longer in need of a physical communication to be va validated by my shaykh physically and to be validated by my shaykh through his murids who do absolutely nothing. They sit on a couch and, and their couch potatoes commenting on, on everything is wrong. This is the world of being active, proactive and being involved and that's how you know this shaykh whether I like him or not he is super active. He must be under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad because his social profile, all that he's doing you don't think our demographics are going up to our golden chain? Which is each of the chain is looking and saying, oh God look how many videos he puts out, he puts at least three videos a week is going out. Look how many books they put out, look how many on their app and how much they're propagating and spending money to advertise the app. Some people they don't even want to pay for their website, they're offering us now to buy the website addresses online. Because the group come together they don't want to even pay the $30 website fee. You know you click all over the world these websites are nobody's paying for them. There was a, what's one you told me? <laughs> There's a, a khatam in a city and they offered that come pay the rent for the, the place and you do your zikr and nobody stepped forward and they closed their zikr because nobody wanted to contribute. So you think things are, are happening by, by people who only are interested in a profit? Or the people who do dawah and their work is for Allah If Allah makes them to be successful that's Allah But they did it to be of service and that's how the shaykh lives. He's not telling anyone to do something he's not doing. He has to be the living example. He doesn't need his shaykh to sit there and praise and throw roses on his head as he walks. He doesn't care what his shaykh is saying. All he needs to know is that what his demographics are. His demographics speak for him that his mouth never needs to and that's why their whole tariqah teaching was you don't have to validate or, or, or vindicate, save yourself with your lips in Allah's presence, right? So when they taught the shaykhs that you're going to be attacked, people are going to attack you and then people even email, oh somebody's attacking you, you know what's your response? I said, it's not our way. We don't have to validate ourselves to anyone nor do we care to vindicate ourselves or, or to qualify ourselves for anyone because nobody gives us anything that is of any importance. Our validation, whom they are truthful with their deeds and their actions. That the deeds of the shaykh have to speak, not him, not him telling with his lips, oh, I'm a great guy, I'm a good guy, please you know follow me. No, it's the deeds of the shaykh have to sit. So that those demographics when you look at this person and say that this guy has got a lot of demographics for Allah and for Prophet 
that all these uh, videos going out, all these products going out, all of these, this love of Sayyidina Muhammad from every modality, they're loading on SoundCloud, on, on podcast, they put it on YouTube, they put it on Telegram. They put, I don't think there's a thing that we haven't touched wherever shaitan is we are right there fiercely going after them. So that why? Why is the shaykh doing that? Why is the shaykh busy and active trying to raise funds to do all of these projects and much more? Why? Because his demographics have to be very strong in his silsila and his only interest is to make sure that these 40 shaykhs they're happy, his Ahlul Bayt who are behind him they're happy. When they see the demographic profile, so imagine that you think business and the, the, the business tycoons are something. You know the, the CEO when he comes in oh he looks at a, a demographic, he doesn't go to like you know is the milk coming from the cow, he looks at the report, how much are you producing? What are these numbers? And they're chart readers and number readers. What do you think then from the shaykhs? They're going into like minute details or Allah sending them reports that look at what their reports are, look what they're doing, look how they're trying to reach, look at all that they're trying to inspire and that's all that matters. If their shaykhs, their Ahlul Bayt and all their support system is vigilant over what they're doing, the numbers, the product. The, what they're putting out speaks for them, not their tongue have to, to show and promote themselves. What they produce speaks for them and then all of that information is going up to Sayyidina Muhammad Who has to speak on the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad You think how much competition is in that area of demographics? You think there's thousands of people producing those types of products? We said Ahl Sunnah has vanished and became Ahl Qur'an on this earth. In the masjid there's nobody speaking about the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the akhlaq, the character and the Sunnah because the Imams are not covered, they're not bearded and they don't even represent the Sunnah anymore. So in a time when they're not even proud of their… of mentioning and Prophet described that they would come that they won't mention my name in the masjid. So then you think with this type of profile, how many of these profiles are going up into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that's spreading the love, spreading the haqqaiq, spreading the reality? No. And that's why as a result there's so much fires from Sayyidina Muhammad so much nazar. Not from asking anyone, don't have to ask anyone for that nazar to come to our soul. It's what we produce that produces that. What we do with our actions and what we're… what you see the proof is in the pudding. What we put out, you should know with all your heart and soul that Prophet must be happy with them. That his fires and nazar must be upon them because so much is coming out of that reality. So anything you do in that way, in that report when Prophet is looking, he's looking like us at that same thing, he sees the demographics. So all these things that they're doing is, oh my God look what Shamash is making, look what Lloyd these producers are putting out. We said the miracle of how they produce that vi those videos, they take talks from we don't know how far back, could be months back, weeks back how they put it, how they edit it, how they put clips together, it's all by faiz. How are they receiving all of this inspiration to put these things together? And then when it comes out it's so timely that events in the world will match what their product is coming out. That can not be by anything other than the grace of Allah and then madad and the support of Sayyidina Muhammad that the direct nazar of Prophet is happy and rida upon that and dressing that reality, blessing that reality. So not only the shaykh's amas are going up but everything and everyone involved in that amal because he's merely just the conductor, he's not the whole thing. He's the one motivating people, come contribute, come and, and write, come and, and, and uh, translate some articles, come and, and produce for us. There's a, 
computer uh, person who's who's running the the computer is unimaginable what he does producing apps websites uh, databases everything you don't think when Prophet is looking at the app and saying how their numbers of their app how many people got the aura this this year from the app when all the big uh, big ustads they didn't even put out what the aura was how this app has 20,000 followers and they found their awrat for Rajab. Who gets the barakah of that? Every time you recite everything from that app, we get the barakah. You just say, Bismillah, because of that app, that dresses, that's a, a sadaqah jariya for me, for my family, my descendants, for my community and the people whom are following. They're all shareholders in that reality. So every time somebody clicks on that app, reads a du'a from that app, does the awrad from that app and Sayyidina Muhammad is happy, the shajar of the shaykhs they're happy, they're dressing, they're blessing, then you understand that this immense fires and light that comes upon the shaykh then begin to emanate to all those whom are participating, translating, actively engaging, running and, and keeping the center alive, keeping the products moving, keeping everything that we're doing. It's a huge orchestra. There are 50 translators now that people are managing and translating and, and putting uh, translations on the videos and putting books together. These are immense. And that's why they want us to understand this faiz is not just you ask for a faiz. Other, other than if your name is Faiz al Haq, you can <laughs> mention Faiz, but, but Faiz <laughs> comes by our actions. And that's why the shaykhs are active in their life, they encourage people to be active, they encourage people to support, they encourage people to, to use their God-given gift. If you have hands then use them, if you have a, a knowledge and understanding, if you have a, a heart that can contribute anything, if you have a pulse. Just do something in the way of Allah <laughs> If you don't have a post in this we can't do anything. But why? Why? So that you'll get their nazar, you'll be under this flow of immense grace that's dressing and blessing them. And that's why they don't need to validate themselves to others. Because sometimes the, the, the students will come and say, oh this one said that, this one said that. But don't worry about that. There's so much on our plate right now, mashaAllah, with all these activities. That's all that speaks to Allah All day long you could praise yourself to people. But if that… if, if the demographic is not going to Allah to be happy, all the people in the world and that's what's meant by that reality, all the people in the world won't change Allah's opinion about you if the file is not matching. So this person wants all these things but I'm, I don't see it in his file, Prophet doesn't see it in the file and our whole life was inspired to make our Islam real. You know find someone that you love. Go behind them and begin to support, be active with them in every type of activity you do, every time your name is clicking and showing it's going into that file and that file every day is being presented. That's how you know what you want to support. You say, these people are active and I want to support them because I know their file must be read daily if not minute by minute from the heavens. Because of so much is going up, so much is countering. Look at the scenario of, of how their dawah changes the whole marketplace. Everybody's video now has beautiful ambient sounds. Why? Because you come into this uh, arena of people and say, look if you're going to talk about Prophet you better make it beautiful because unbelievers are watching us. You have to make it a beautific experience, you're talking about paradises and immense realities. Put beautiful scenarios, beautiful sounds, put the best of what you have for Allah and now look all these Ahlul Sunnah shaykhs all have beautiful sounds and even the people I didn't even think they allowed sound. They're putting on ambient sounds, they're putting on salawats and zikrs in the background, alhamdulillah. Coping is the highest form of flattery, the people are, are happy with you they, they're copying it.
But that's a sign for the people to understand that when people are active, get behind them and get involved. If you want the nazar and that's what all your emails are asking, nazar, 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 then it's as simple as getting involved. Getting involved and clicking, participating. I'm saying you'll be on the SoundCloud files, we would see you there. You'll be on Telegram, we'll see you there. You'll be on YouTube, we'll see you there. You'll be on the shop, we'll see you there. You'll be on the donor list, we see you there. Click by click, day by day. People who are giving on a daily basis, everything passes the eyes of the shaykh. And all of that is going up into the heavens and bringing immense amounts of fayas and lights and blessings and dressings. That is needed in days of difficulty because now everybody is, is, is scared of, of this sickness, that sickness, this death, that death. It can be very scary if you don't think your account is set properly with Allah And that's again why they're inspiring, be active because you sleep very good at night. Because you sleep and put your head down, oh, Ya Rabbi I tried really my best, I tried my best today to do the most I can. Even if my eyes are not working properly, I try to look at everything, comment back to everyone, give a shukr to everyone who's, who's involved. And you try your best and at night you sleep with the best of intention and you pray that Allah give you strength to go through another day. So this gives us the sakina within our hearts. Otherwise if I know to myself, oh, I'm not doing anything and I see the imminence of death and, and demons and all sorts of horrific things around me and my family and everything that I, I hold to be sacred and to be, to be blessed, of course I should be scared. Again your, your account and demographics is not matching what you ask, Ya Rabbi save me from all of these things and your demographic file is empty, Allah's like, why, why? You're not doing anything here. What's the difference, you're here or not here, you, you go to you, it's better for you because they're losing themselves here. They're staying and you know if the demographics are not correct for Allah and you're not, your, your, your kitab Allah says, I give you on your right hand. When, when Allah wants to give you a demographic file, you read Qur'an with technology understanding. It says, I'm going to place the believer in their book in their right hand. What is that book? Everything you've done. This is your demographics and if it wasn't good the book's not coming into your right hand, the book will be given into your left hand. That your sayat is all that we have written for you, the abundance of your sayat is all that you, you have. You didn't click on the shaykh on anything but you watched all those inappropriate videos, you clicked on those one after another, multiple successions of them. <laughs> That's why the shaykh is in every platform, oh before you touch those buttons click here. I don't put in that, that, that guy in the ding button the, like a wrestling ring, subscribe now, ding. Why? Because this is a battle, this is a battle to get people to have amal that Allah will be pleased with so it goes into their right hand. And Allah just says, all oh, that you did on earth and your time on earth and everything that you, you, you participated in, here's your kitab. Your demographic file is beatific and blessed and, and, and become holy. But now people all they're doing is, is just all of the inappropriate. That's why then the shaykhs are active, promoting, pushing in on all these platforms wherever these things are, watch this, watch this. Put that into your feed and subscribe to the channel so that you force yourself to get a daily sobat. Why are you not having that? We, when, when we were coming into tariqah, we were dying for a talk from Shaykh Nazim. And there would be one guy visiting from London with Ismail because he would always go to the Ramadan big jama of, of Shaykh Nazim and he would record like 20 cassettes. And then he would come into town and then begin to sell them to everyone, you know record 20, 20, 20, 20. Anybody was grabbing the cassettes of Shaykh Nazim's talks. There was no internet then, there was nobody you could listen to what he actually said. You had to take it from this mouth to that mouth and by 10 times somebody told you the story they changed it 10 times. So to get the actual recording of Shaykh Nazim's holy voice and talking about Armageddon, talking about last days. How much people were trying to get these knowledges and feed themselves from haqqaiqs and realities. 
And Allah is trying to make it simple because it's the last days that Jah is, is moving onto this earth. Put the feed onto your TV, subscribe to it and make sure every day a video is coming in. And every day I'm a talib, I'm going to sit and take a lesson. That lesson for the day, Ya Rabbi let me to be dressed by it, to understand it, to be blessed by it and then I go out into my world. Or at night if the day starts off too busy then I'm going to close off my day by subscribing to them, to listen to them. And if I'm not going to do I'll subscribe to their audio files with SoundCloud and, and podcast. I mean there's so many ways to be actively involved to feed ourselves with these realities, dress ourselves with these realities and to make the kitab inshaAllah to be good, to be strong. And this becomes the blessings for our home, for our children and our community inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.